Welcome back everybody. This is the fourth part of our tutorial on setting up your home base web server using Ubuntu Server Edition. Um, in the previous parts of our tutorial we talked about uh, what kind of machine you could use for your home base web server. Uh, in the second part of our tutorial we went through the install process, installed uh, a few of the minimal options that we want available for us on our uh, home base web server uh, being Apache, MySQL, and SSH. Uh, in the third part of our tutorial, we went through the logging into your uh, home base web server using a Telnet client, an SSH client called Putty. Um, we logged in, I showed you a few commands to kind of list files and directories uh, on the system, and then I pointed you to a tutorial on how to install Webmin. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with what Webmin is, Webmin is just a uh, interface, a web, web browser interface for accessing your server uh, so you won't need to log in with a Telenet or SSH client. Um, there'll be times that you're going to need to be able to use uh, a Telenet or SSH client to log into the server to make changes on the server that you may not be able to do uh, you know, via webmin. Um, the tutorial I pointed you to uh, on installing webmin should have been a pretty straightforward uh, tutorial on installing webmin. So hopefully that was able to get you set up and running and got Webmin installed. Um, if not, you know, if you had any type of problems or ran into uh, an issue, feel free to leave a comment below that video. That'd be the uh, Ubuntu server uh, setup uh, part three. Uh, like I said, just feel free to leave a comment or a question down there if you ran into any type of problems with that. Um, in this part of the tutorial, I'm just going to kind of assume that you were able to go ahead and get that set up and running and we're just going to kind of go over some basic configurations. Uh, also in the previous tutorial I touched a little bit on host files. Um, in this part I'll kind of go over those again uh, to kind of clarify a few things with those uh, and how you can use your host file. Uh, so if you're ready we'll go ahead and start going over a few of the basics with your uh, webmin interface and some things that you can do and things that you might want to set up and get going for you to kind of get you get you going all right all right so here we are uh, with our web browser opened up um, here you see the default page for Apache if you've typed in your IP address of your server machine in the browser, uh, you'll notice um, a default page will be displayed to you, uh, showing you that uh, Apache's running and everything's working okay. Uh, if you're not presented with this, uh, you might need to check your IP address uh, and make sure that it's correct. Um, also, there could be you know some other issues that may be going on there. Uh, so you'll have to kind of do some digging and some checking to see why uh, it's not working like it's supposed to be. Uh, you might want to check your router, make sure things are forwarded to that address uh, correctly. Um, and again, make sure your IP address is correct. Uh, your IP address may be different than the ones displayed here on my machine. Uh, depending on your, your home network setup, um, it could be just about anything. Um, so again, if you've typed in your IP address uh, in, the, in your URL up here, uh, uh, where you would type in, you know, a website address, you'll should be presented with a, a page that looks similar to this, letting you know that Apache is working fine. Um, the other part uh, is Webmin. Uh, if you type in the address of your server machine and port number of webmin which is 10,000 uh, and if you fail to enter the S after the HTTP uh, you'll probably give it a message looking similar to this telling you that this web server is running in SSL mode um, and it's going to tell you to go ahead and try this other URL which you'll notice as an S after the HTTP um, what this is is secure socket layer uh, a lot of websites uh, such as Facebook and many other popular sites use uh, a certificate uh, to authenticate uh, the connection between 
one machine and another machine to make sure that all data passed between the two machines is encrypted and help prevent eavesdropping. Um, I won't go over that too much uh, in this tutorial as we're just going to be talking about the basics of configuring Webmin, uh, but I figured I'd just kind of point this stuff out to you, that way you'll know um, what to do when you're presented with these uh, different pages. So again, you'll type in your uh, address up here of your server machine followed by a colon and then the port number, which uh, Webmin's default port number is 10,000. Uh, and if you fail to enter the HTTPS, uh, it should present you with a page that looks similar to this. You can just go ahead and click and follow this link. Uh, and now you'll be presented with another site. And I've shown this intentionally uh, to let you know what you'll need to do to go ahead and access your server. At this point, it's trying to make a connection on that SSL. But uh, Internet Explorer or Firefox or Google Chrome or whatever browser you're using, uh, its error message may be a little different. Uh, they're basically saying the same thing. Uh, they're saying that there's a problem with this website's uh, security certificate. Uh, the reason why it does that is because the security certificate that's being uh, used is not one that's recognized by the web browser itself. Uh, many of the popular websites out there have gone through the process of purchasing a known certificate uh, that's known by uh, most compatible uh, in popular browsers such as like there's sites called like VeriSign uh, you can buy certificates through them and they'll be known by the web browser so you won't have an issue with that certificate uh, your clients won't be presented with a message like this when you use a, a certificate that's known by the web browser uh, so in order to get past this and get to the login screen for your uh, web browser uh, or for your webmin uh, interface uh, you have two options down here it says we recommend that you close this web page do not continue this website you can either click here to close this web page uh, if you know that the IP address is correct and port number and that you're actually accessing your your web uh, server machine then you'll want to go ahead and continue to this website you can also click this for more information and it kind of give you a little description down there what's going on um, we're going to go ahead and click continue this website. <coughs> of course, Internet Explorer is going to tell you it's not recommended, but we do know that uh, this is the IP address of our server machine, so uh, we shouldn't have anything to worry about. Uh, by doing so, you'll notice that the URL bar up here has changed to a different color. It's now red, uh, indicating that you know uh, it's on an SSL connection. However, it's not a uh, trusted. Uh, SSL connection so uh, you can see there's a little red X up here a little sign showing a security report uh, certificate invalid uh, you can view the certificate uh, and gives you a little brief information there but again you should be presented with a login to webmin uh, so you'll want to enter your username and password uh, for your server Once you've logged in, successfully logged into Webmin, uh, you should be presented with a page that looks similar to this, letting you know uh, some of the default uh, uh, system settings of your server, such as your system host, ma host name, operating system, uh, the Webmin server version, uh, time of system, uh, kernel and CPU that's being used, process or, uh, processor information, system uptime, running processes, uh, memory, virtual memory, local disk space. Also, if there's a newer version of Webmin available, it will uh, give you an option to upgrade and let you know what version you're running and what the new version is. Um, also, um, uh, you'll notice on the left-hand side over here that you'll have some a little menu uh, of different options that are available to you. Um, system information, that's where we're at right now. If you click on system information, it's going to show you the system information. 
uh, you'll have uh, Webmin. If you click on Webmin, you'll notice some more options pop out beneath it. Uh, Webmin configuration, server index, users. And then you'll also have these other options here: system, and server, and other networking, uh, hardware, cluster, and unused modules. And you see, there's a lot of different options available within the Webmin interface. And we'll go ahead and close some of these up as we're not going to be talking about all of them. Um, I'll try to keep this tutorial, uh, this video, fairly short and to the point. Uh, one of the first things you're probably going to want to do is, well, how, figure out, you know, how this page is displayed here. Well, that's pretty easy. If you go to servers, if you click on this link over here, servers. You'll see Apache Web Server, MySQL, and Read User Mail. Uh, the Read User Mail uh, may or may not be available, uh, but your Apache Web Server and MySQL database server should be available if you installed uh, Apache Web Server and MySQL database server during the initial install of your server machine. Apache Web Server is the one you're going to want to click on, and that's going to be what controls the page here. Uh, is Apache Web Server. Um, here you have two different servers listed. You have a default server and a virtual server. Uh, your virtual server is what's actually uh, showing you the, the default web page, this page here. As you'll notice, if you click on this uh, globe symbol, uh, you click on it, and it will present you with another page giving you uh, several options available for your web server. Um, if you notice back here on your the home page also uh, it, it gives you a little uh, description of what's going on over here, uh, what address this virtual server is assigned, what port number it's on, uh, the server name, and the document root. Document root is where the default document lies. So here you see var and www, uh, which is, uh, I think I said one too many w's there, but uh, nonetheless, um, that's where this page lies, is this document root. Um, and the server name is automatic. It's uh, automatically assigned to this virtual host, and same as the, the address, it handles any, any address. If you only have one IP address, which I'm going to assume you only have one IP address on your server machine, then it's going to handle that IP address. Uh, any incoming connections on port 80, it's going to handle it. And so let's click on this here to go in and, and look at some other options that are available. As you'll notice, you'll have several options available up above here, uh, starting with processes and limits, networking and addresses, log files, document options, MIME types, PHP. If you have PHP installed, you'll be presented with that option. If not, then that may not be available. Directory, uh, indexing, CGI, alias and redirects, error handling, filters, languages, uh, show directives, edit directives. Down here beneath that you'll see a per directory options. And these are directories that are handled by the virtual server and options that you can set for each directory. Uh, beneath that you'll see uh, create per directory files or locations options you can set directory options um, for each one of these directories. Um, that's a little beyond the scope of this tutorial uh, or at least in this part of the tutorial as far as setting up uh, per directory options we won't go into that. Um, as far as addresses go you'll have a default server, any, or you can assign a specific address. And your specific address, the address that you might want to assign to that is the IP address is what you're going to want to put there. Whatever the IP address is that you're going to want to handle. And again, I'm assuming that you only have one IP address. So the IP address of this server is 192.168.0.4. So we can put that in there. So it will know to handle any incoming connections on this IP address. So if you have your uh, port 80 forwarded to this server machine on this IP address, um, it will know to handle any incoming connections on this IP address. Uh, a port, again, uh, you can set it to default, any, or port 80, or a different port. Uh, we're going to leave it to port 80 as it's pretty much the default 
uh, HTTP port uh, and document root. You can either set it to default or uh, another directory. Um, by default, it defaults to this directory here, which is var www uh, and server name. Here, you can put a name of the server, or you can leave it to default. And what we're talking about here with the default is is this server here, the default server. Uh, default server handles all default connections to the server. So any virtual server that you may set up, if you click on this tab to create a virtual server, um, you can set it up to uh, to handle all default connections. Uh, you can have one server, you can have many virtual servers, and one of those virtual servers handling all incoming connections by the default server. Uh, and set some some different little options for it. Uh, we're going to kind of change up our virtual server so it's not uh, set to everything's not set to default. Um, for one, you might want to change what directory um, is used by the default virtual server or by the virtual server. Um, if you click on this little button over here, you should be popped up with a little box and it should give you a listing of different files and directories uh, in the root of the system. If you want to put it uh, that directory, make the <coughs> document root of this virtual server to your home directory, your user directory, uh, we can do that. Uh, and you'll want to click back out uh, and go back to the, the root of the system and select the home directory. Uh, by going to the home directory, you'll see I have two directories set up here. And we'll go into my directory here. Uh, and we'll set it to um, this directory by default. So at this point, if we do that uh, and we save it, uh, now you'll see that the address that it's handling is this, this IP address. And the document root is now become home Kyle Coots. Uh, you'll want to make sure you apply changes after making changes to your default web server, otherwise they won't take effect until you have applied them. So we'll go ahead and apply those changes. And now that the changes have been applied, we'll go ahead and try refreshing the page. As you see, now we get a listing of everything that's in my home directory, which is probably not something you're going to want to do. You're probably not going to want to allow others to view all of your files and folders. Um, and we can change that. Uh, to where it won't show those. Um, if you want to make it to where it doesn't list any directories and files, you'll go back into your virtual server here. And we'll want to click on the edit directives. Uh, and as you see, you'll see some directives here uh, that are available to you. And what these are are directory uh, directives. If you click back to return to index, you'll notice you'll have these directories here listed and that's what's listed in the edit directives uh, file. Uh, you'll notice a server admin uh, a webmaster at localhost. That's an email address that you can assign for this virtual server. So in case something goes wrong or something happens with this virtual server, it will send an email to this email address. Below you'll notice the document root, uh, and this is the document root for this virtual server. And then you'll notice directory forward slash which is it lists some options beneath it. Uh, options follow sim, sim links uh, and then allow override none um, because you don't want to allow, uh, allow it to follow some links in the root of the file system. Uh, and then you'll notice also the directory home Kyle Coots uh, and then uh, a directory for user lib CGI bin and then also uh, user shared documents directory directives. These are all directives for each directory that's associated with this virtual server. Uh, in order to eliminate people from browsing all the files and folders and uh, the directory that's associated with the virtual server, you need to come down here to the directory uh, of, that's assigned to that virtual host. Uh, and the directory that's assigned to this virtual host that you're going to be looking for, the directives are the document root, which is the home Kyle Coots, and yours may be different. Um, so you'll come back to edit directives and find the 
portion of the directives where it says directory home forward slash home forward slash your name um, or it could be bar www and the options that you're going to change is it says options and, and then it lists options these options here are available um, for this directory uh, indexes is the option that we're going to want to change and we'll just want to put a minus sign beside that and then click save make sure you apply your changes and now you can go and refresh the page and you can see that you do not have permission to access uh, that directory on the server uh, we've changed that directive in there uh, to not allow indexing uh, to show an index of that directory so that should pretty well take care of that now that we've uh, moved our document root to uh, another folder uh, and we've changed the IP address and left the port uh, to the default 80 port 480 and we've changed our directives uh, to not allow indexing um, the server name we can go ahead and change that uh, if you have a, a URL uh, that you want to associate with this virtual server such as mydomain.com you can enter that here uh, you'll probably want to enter that without the www or any HTTP in there because it's not necessary so you'll just enter whatever it is uh, mydomain.com and click save and apply changes however uh, now that you see that server name is mydomain.com uh, you won't be able to access that up here in uh, the uh, URL uh, by typing in mydomain.com or whatever your domain name might be. Uh, the web browser is not going to know unless you've purchased that domain name and you have it pointed to your IP address, uh, the IP address that's associated with your internet connection. Um, others will be able to access it that way but you may not be able to access it by typing in your domain name uh, and that's where the host file comes in uh, you want to open up your if you're on a Windows machine you want to open up the host document um, and I'll do that here and show you what I'm talking about um, if you haven't uh, figure out how to find your host file or open it up I'll show you uh, where that's located or I'll leave a link to where that's located underneath this video here's the host file uh, in this file I'll just kind of show you uh, where it's located here uh, that's where your host file is located uh, C colon backslash Windows system 32 drivers etc hosts uh, host is the name of the file ETC is the directory. Uh, we don't want to save it. Um, you'll notice a bunch of pound keys, uh, pound uh, symbols. Uh, those there represent uh, uh, parts of uh, the file that are not used. Um, so if you wanted to exclude part of the file, you would use the pound symbol. If you wanted to point your domain name, mydomain.com, to your server machine on your local network, you can simply do this by entering the IP address of your server machine followed by a space and then your domain name and then make sure you save your file you'll need to make sure you open up this host file uh, and run it as an administrator so you'll need to open WordPad as an administrator uh, you do that by right clicking on uh, notepad and then selecting the option to run as administrator from that option menu and then once you've done that uh, point your uh, you know, go to the file open and then select uh, the host file from from this location. Uh, make sure you select all files down here, and you'll notice the host file, and that's the host file there. Um, once you've done that, you should be able to go here and type in uh, mydomain.com, and as you see, it has loaded this. And to show you that this is working, we're going to go ahead and create a document in our document root. We've now changed our document root to home Kyle Coots. And what we'll actually want to do is go ahead and configure um, 
another directory beneath the, the home Kyle Cutes directory to hold all of our web files. And we can do that by the webmin interface uh, by sl simply uh, selecting others and then go to the file manager option. Uh, once you've clicked on that, you'll have to have Java installed for, in order for this to work. And it will pop you up a box saying that this website certificate cannot be verified. Do you want to continue? Uh, as long as you trust it and everything is good to go, you should be able to just select yes. And you'll notice that you'll be presented with a, uh, a listing of all your uh, file browser. Um, here you'll be able to go into your home directory and select Kyle Coots. And now you have all these other options available up above here to do different things. Uh, what we want to do now is create a directory to hold all of our web documents, so we'll select the new folder option. Uh, you'll be presented with another little box uh, asking you to enter the name of the directory you want to create. We'll just name it www, so we'll know that it's our uh, web document directory. As you see, it's created a directory here. Um, and now, at this point, we'll probably want to create a document to, to put in there, so we'll have something to display. Uh, for when users look at our website. Uh, here you can create a, a document. We can just say, hello, uh, this is our default web document. And then we'll select save. to enter a name up above here. <laughs> uh, you'll enter a name just like you've done before and we'll call this index.html and save and close and now as you notice you have an index file listed in that directory. Again your page will not load that document because we have not pointed our web server to that directory. So in order to do that we'll need to go back to Apache and select the virtual server and then change our document root to that directory. We can either do that by doing this, by just entering it, or we can select a little button on the side and a box will pop up giving you a listing of all uh, directories and files that are listed within that directory and selecting the www directory. Select OK, click Save, and now apply changes. Now that I've applied changes, I can go back to my web page here and refresh it and as you see it's loaded that document hello this is our default web document pretty simple right so that pretty well takes care of uh, that part um, as far as configuring your Apache and moving uh, your document route to a different document uh, or different uh, directory uh, and setting up the default IP address that's associated with this virtual server um, a few other things that are available uh, in your global configuration uh, you'll notice here uh, like networking and addresses. If you want to allow uh, more ports to be available for your virtual servers, you can do so here um, by selecting this. If you select, uh, you can select all for all IP addresses or select this option to enter a specific IP address that's associated um, and then a port if you wanted to make another port available for virtual servers, you can do that. And then you have some other options to keep, li keep a live timeout, listen, queue length, uh, request timeout, TCP, send buffer size, um, and I'm not going to get into those options in this part of the tutorial, but uh, there's some other options you can definitely go look up if you'd like uh, to know more about them. Uh, here we've assigned another IP address, or the same IP address, and another port number. Uh, how we can use that is, uh, we'll go ahead and save that. Um, another thing while we're here, we can uh, you have a configure Apache modules. These are modules that are available for, to Apache. Um, here's the module for PHP. Uh, if you're a PHP developer and you'd like to set up PHP on your server, you'll need to install PHP and then come back here to Apache uh, modules and uh, select that option. By default, it may be unselected, so you'll need to select that option and then select the enable selected modules. Some of these options, uh, modules may not necessarily need to be available uh, or used. Some options you may 
uh, need. So you'll have to just kind of figure out based on what kind of web server setup you, you're going after, what, what modules you'll need to uh, configure. Uh, here's the option for SSL if you're wondering. If you want to use a server in an SSL environment when you're a virtual host, uh, this is the module you'll want to select for that and enable selected modules. Uh, and now at this point we can go ahead and create another virtual host if we like. Uh, we can set the specific address to our IP address that we want to use. Um, and the port, uh, at this point we want to use port 8080 as we've assigned that. Uh, and then also we'll just go ahead and, and point this back to our original uh, www directory. Uh, we can set this to any directory we like to use. We'll just set it to that, that way we'll know the difference between our other document and our new virtual host uh, using a different port number. Uh, we'll go ahead and create this. And as you can see, uh, the server name is going to be automatic, uh, but it's going to be bound to this IP address and this port number. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and click Apply Changes to apply those changes. And at this point, we can go here and type in the IP address of our server. Now if we only enter the IP address, it's probably going to default to this this document. Now if we like, we can specify the specific port by using a colon and then typing 8080. And as you see, we've done that and now we've accessed a different document that's available. Um, so now we have two virtual servers running, uh, two servers running with Apache, uh, displaying two different uh, web pages uh, located in two different directories. Uh, one of them is running on port 8080 and the other is running on port 80. Um, there's multiple ways to go about doing this. If you don't want to assign separate port numbers, you can simply uh, use a domain name uh, that's associated. If, even if you haven't purchased a do no domain name, this is where the host file comes in. Um, we can do this by entering our IP address again in our host file and then selecting uh, by entering another uh, domain name in here. Uh, as you see this says myotherdomain.com and mydomain.com and they're both pointed to the same address. Now this is only available through your local network so it doesn't really make a difference what domain uh, you use. You can use pretty much any any domain or any name that you want. Um, you're probably going to want to stick with the .com extension, uh, just to, you know, or .net, .org, just to kind of keep things simple for you. Um, once you've done that, make sure you save that file, um, and then you can come back here to your Apache web server, and we'll go back and we'll change this port to port 80. But what we'll do is we'll set the server name. And we'll set that server name to the same as our other server name, this server name here myotherdomain.com and we'll save it and we'll apply changes I warn you though sometimes uh, Internet Explorer does like to do things itself however it works first time no problem uh, sometimes Internet Explorer gets a little screwy on uh, things as far as it, it will want to try to look to the outside world for whatever reason but as long as things are set up in your host file correctly um, it, it should work just fine like it has done here uh, as you notice my other domain and my domain uh, they're both serving up uh, web pages that are on our local web server um, but that are only available within our local our, our local network um, unless you have a, a, a URL a, a domain name um, that's being pointed to your server machine uh, whatever that domain name is you'll want to make sure you enter that domain name here uh, in the server name uh, if you're wanting it to uh, point to that virtual host otherwise it points to the default server which is this server here and then any virtual servers listed beneath it that are set up to handle default connections um, as one of these virtual servers was by default, uh, that's the server that's going to handle that connection. Or more than likely the first server that's listed, which would be this server here, will handle any connections that are unknown. Um, 
So that's just kind of the basics on setting up your virtual host and if you have a couple different domain names with a couple different directories that you want to use um, and setting up a host file. Um, if you don't want to use, uh, if at some point you want to exclude but not necessarily delete uh, a domain to IP address uh, listed in your uh, host file, you can do so by just selecting the pound option uh, or entering the pound key, uh, symbol and uh, right before uh, the IP address and domain name and then make sure you save that file and now that's, that will no longer be listed uh, associated with, with that domain. Although as long as there's cache in the browser it will still know that uh, or still believe that this domain is associated with that IP address until you've cleared the browser cache. So effects may not take change until after you've uh, cleared the browser cache. After you've cleared the browser cache, um, it won't it won't try to resolve uh, this domain name to this IP address. Uh, but for the meantime, we'll leave it like that. Um, a few other options we'll go over while we're here is the networking uh, options. You'll have some uh, Linux firewall, bandwidth monitoring, uh, network configuration, and that's one of the ones that I wanted to look at. Um, here you have host addresses. And host name and DNS client, routing and gateways, and network interfaces. Networking interfaces uh, list your interfaces that are available with your uh, on your server machine, uh, meaning your network cards. Uh, and here you have uh, your Ethernet type and uh, IP address that's associated with it, the net mask address, and what the status is of that card. Um, we can also uh, set host addresses that are associated and this is similar to uh, your host file with Windows. Um, you can set up uh, host files, uh, set up your host um, uh, host names so you could if you have multiple servers running on your network you can let this server know that uh, a domain name is at a different IP address if you had another server running elsewhere and needed to point something towards that you could say that IP address in uh, my third domain dot com uh, is listed here at this IP address so that way this server machine knows anytime that there's a request for my third domain dot com uh, to look to this IP address for that and you can just select create and as you'll see uh, this is this is how it's listed uh, it's very similar to Windows uh, host file. It's basically kind of the same thing as you can see here. Uh, you have um, the IP address associated with the .com name or domain name, and here in Windows you have the IP address associated with the domain name. So it's pretty much the same thing. Only thing is it's only uh, going to work within your local network. That's not something that's going to point to the outside world unless this IP address is an IP address that's you know a remote connection you, you can also enter that as well uh, say you have a remote uh, machine somewhere else and you want to resolve a domain name to that remote IP address you'll enter it there um, that pretty well takes care of that the host files and a little bit of basics on webmin again if uh, to kind of give you a once over oh uh, one other thing I kind of wanted to cover is your MySQL database um, Here's your MySQL database. Um, uh, you'll have some different options available here. Here's the default uh, tables that are available uh, with MySQL. Uh, unless you know what you're doing, I don't recommend changing any of those. Uh, however, you can create a new database by selecting the Create New Database. Uh, and uh, excuse me, I said these were tables. These are all databases. Uh, you create a new database if you want to create a new, new database for your uh, web application use uh, my database uh, you can set the character set whatever type of character you want to set uh, for that uh, database the default character set uh, typically uh, the UTF-8 is the the well-known well-used uh, character set uh, and you have some other options uh, here's your <coughs> uh, some other options available down here uh, you can just go ahead and create that database and as you'll see you'll 
I have your my database available, uh, and now you can create a new table on your database. Uh, you can create a table, uh, my table, uh, and your field names. Um, maybe ID uh, name and um, uh, just to kind of uh, create a default table here. Uh, something wrong there. time is a charm. Get it right the third time here. Name and post. Uh, manager and set that to text. We'll set this to variable character. in our database and our my database uh, and you'll have some other options available down here database permission user permissions host permissions table permissions field permissions server configuration um, database connections MySQL system variables and change administrative password uh, these are some options that you can just play with uh, do a little research on uh, if you're familiar with using MySQL database uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble here uh, I'll try to get into more of this uh, maybe in another video. Um, so there's your MySQL database, um, Apache web server, uh, read user, excuse me, read user mail. <coughs> if you don't have a mail server installed, uh, you won't have this option available to you. Uh, you can go down here to uh, unused modules and find one that's available, uh, one that you want to use, uh, a mail server. Uh, you can use either the post fixed uh, mail server and, and select that option to uh, install it and typically most modules will be able to be installed via the webmin interface um, you can automatically install that uh, click here to have it installed and this is what will happen it will automatically go ahead and download and install uh, that uh, the mail server <coughs> and we'll go ahead and let this <coughs> install hopefully this don't take too long to install while something's installing you don't want to select any of these other options as it may interrupt the install process and just want to let it go ahead and finish once it's finished then you'll be able to go ahead and exit uh, and this is kind of let you know package uh, post fix was installed successfully uh, and gives you some uh, information about that so now you can go back here to servers and select a post fix mail server <coughs> and now you have a mail server installed on your system. Uh, you can now select the read user mail and read user mail will be available and you'll be able to see all the different user uh, email boxes that are available to you within your system. Uh, now you can compose new email and send out email uh, to others uh, just like you would within any other email box. Uh, you have your postfix mail server options and these options, there's several options to it um, so you'll probably want to look, read up on the documentation on whatever mail server you decide to, to install. Um, one last thing, uh, in your webmin option up here, you can set your webmin configuration. 
uh, you have several options available and these are some of the options that uh, really I probably should have gone over in the beginning of this tutorial uh, these options are IP access control, ports and addresses, logging and, and several other options um, you can set your start at boot time whether or not uh, webmin actually starts at boot time by default it's selected to yes uh, you can also restart the webmin uh, submit OS information if you want to submit the information of your operating system to the webmin developers uh, also you can refresh modules that are available in case you've installed new modules uh, ports and addresses and IP access control are the two that I'm probably going to look at the most right now uh, IP access control as you notice you can set the allowed IP addresses and I've already gone ahead and done so and set up the, uh, that only certain IP addresses are allowed to access uh, the webmin interface you can either select it to allow from all addresses which is I think set by default by the webmin uh, install or you can select to only allow from listed IP addresses and enter those IP addresses uh, make sure you enter the IP address of the server machine or the machine that you're accessing it from um, otherwise uh, you will lock yourself out from accessing it uh, from the machine that you're on um, also you can enter uh, other IP addresses on your home or remote networks that you want to allow access to uh, and you can select it to resolve host name on every request uh, this is a something that's going to probably be more specific to your setup uh, depending on what you want to do here um, if you wanted to resolve the host name um, uh, of whatever's being, you know, whatever machine's accessing your webmin interface, uh, it can it can try to resolve that host name on every request. Otherwise, you may just leave that option uh, set to no. Uh, ports and addresses. Uh, here's uh, some options that are specific to the webmin uh, interface. Uh, you set what IP address and port uh, it will listen on. Uh, if you have more, multiple IP addresses associated with your server machine, you can set it to, to only listen on a specific, uh, either a single IP address or multiple IP addresses and ports. Uh, here you see the list of the default port that it listens on. We can change that to a different port number if we'd like. And we'll do that just to kind of give you an example of what happens there. Uh, and select open a new ports on firewall. Uh, you probably want to leave that selected to open a new port on your firewall otherwise you may not be allowed to access the webmin interface uh, you can also listen for broadcasts on UDP ports um, so if other webmin servers are available on your network and you want to be able to access uh, have access to it you know through one one uh, webmin interface uh, you'll want to select that to, to listen on a specific port whatever specific port you want to listen on or you can select the option to don't listen the other options you have available down here are the web server host name and reserve that uh, reverse resolve connected IP address. Um, what those are is um, if uh, you have a domain name that you want uh, it's specifically to uh, redirect non SSL connections to an SSL connection. Uh, being webmin is on an SSL connection. Uh, if somebody comes in on a non SSL connection. Um, you know, using the specified port, uh, it will redirect them, um, letting them know that this is the address they should use. Uh, such as if you put in mydomain.com uh, and you told it to reverse resolve connected IP addresses uh, to yes and selected save. Uh, now, if you come here and you entered the port number of 900 because we've now changed the port number and as you've noticed that our HTTP uh, is without the S so we're not specifying a, a secure socket layer connection, an SSL connection um, but we have specified the port number and if we press enter we'll be presented with this error uh, bad request page again but at this time now you see uh, it's letting the user know that it, it, the server is running in SSL mode but also that uh, they should try using uh, this uh, address instead of using the IP address it, it now shows the mydomain.com with the port number uh, and at this point uh, you'll need to accept a security certificate again uh, because it's uh, being used under a different uh, address other than the uh, 192.168.0.4 
it is now using the mydomain.com uh, on port 900 so you'll need to continue this website and as you see you're no longer logged in uh, under that domain name so you'll need to enter your login information again in order to log in uh, so those are some of the basic options um, uh, hopefully that should have covered just about everything um, uh, to help you kind of get going in the right direction uh, there's a, a lot of documentation on webmen out there uh, so just feel free to google it look around search um, you should be able to find you know plenty of information available uh, that's you know a little beyond the scope of this tutorial um, I suppose uh, uh, that should take care of it and I hope this helps out uh, all of you who uh, looking to get your home base web server set up and going um, and get you a couple of virtual servers set up uh, some basic configuration with your webman um, uh, feel free to leave comments and questions below and as always uh, visit my website snowballrandom.com um, I don't update it as often as I should but all these videos are available on there and plus I have uh, some PHP code if you're a PHP developer uh, I got some PHP code on there that I've wrote in, uh, some that I found around the web, some that I wrote myself uh, feel free to download and use all of it uh, for anything uh, only thing I ask is kind of leave a comment back let me know how you used it and uh, how it benefited you alright thank you